From lesson one, we know that machines are a combination of components. Machines can be complex, and the forces that act on them can be equally as complex. In this unit, we will look at some of these forces and understand how they influence machine behavior. We will start by defining some common terms used in fluid power. After viewing this unit, you will learn about the units used for measuring force. You will learn about physical terms used in understanding fluid power. You'll learn about the different kinds of energy forms. You'll learn about key physical laws which govern how fluids behave. And you'll learn about some of the units used for measuring flow. Any energy capable of producing a change in the motion of a body is called force and it can be either a pushing or pulling force. It can be linear and it can also be rotary. The two most common units used for measuring force are the pound in the English system and the Newton in the metric system. In physics, mass is the property of matter that measures its resistance to acceleration. Roughly, the mass of an object is a measure of the number of atoms it contains. The basic unit of measurement for mass is the kilogram. The weight of an object is the force of gravity on the object and may be defined as the mass times the acceleration of gravity. Since the weight is a force, its SI unit is the Newton. Density is mass divided by volume. Resistance is the opposition to the movement of fluid. By comparison in electricity, a measurement of resistance would be the difficulty encountered by a power source in forcing electrical current through a wired circuit and hence the amount of power dissipated in the circuit. Electrical resistance is measured in ohms, but in fluid power it is measured in pressure drop. Newton's first law of motion sometimes referred to as the law of inertia, is often stated as an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Energy exists in many forms. Some of the more common forms found in everyday life are light energy, heat energy, mechanical and sound energy. In physics, the law of conservation of energy states that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. It is said to be conserved over time. This law means that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Rather, it can only be transformed from one form to another. There is a scientific law called the law of conservation of mass discovered by Antoine Lavoisier in 1785. In its most compact form, it states that matter is neither created nor destroyed. In 1842, Julius Robert Mayer discovered the law of conservation of energy. Each energy state or form can be converted or changed into the other forms. Although there are many specific types of energy, the two major forms are kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy in moving objects. Examples include mechanical energy and electrical energy. Work is defined as a product of the force and the distance over which the force is applied. Work is done when a force is applied to an object and the object is moved through a distance. For example, when you lift a load, you are applying a force over a distance, so you are doing work. In physics, power is the rate of doing work, the amount of energy transferred per unit of time. In the international system of units, the unit of power is the joule per second known as the Watt in honor of James Watt 
the 18th century developer of the steam engine condenser. One horsepower is the work done at the rate of 550 foot-pounds per second and it is equivalent to 745.7 watts. Horsepower was first used by James Watt who employed it to compare the power of the steam engine with that of horses. Pressure is defined as force per unit area. It is usually more convenient to use pressure rather than force to describe the influence upon fluid behavior. The standard unit for pressure is PSI, which stands for pounds per square inch, a pound of force divided over an area of one square inch. The SI system, the standard is the Pascal, which is a Newton per square meter. This illustration shows how to understand calculating pressure. The block weighs 100 pounds, which, in the instance on the left, is divided over an area of a quarter inch. A quarter of an inch is 0.25 inches. If you divide it 100 by 0.25, you get 400, and that would be PSI, or pounds per square inch. Likewise, if the area is increased and the force stays the same, the pressure will go down. In a fluid power system, the fluid is forced to move through the system by the flow generator, either a pump or a compressor. The fluid is pushed to the point of operation and this is where the work is performed. These are the most common forms of energy found in manufacturing. Mechanical includes mechanisms that have gears, chains, belts, and pulleys. Electrical, still the most common, is the easiest to transmit. And of course any system that uses hydraulics or pneumatics is known as fluid power. When fluids are under pressure, they possess potential energy. The quantitative measurement of fluid movement is known as flow. Common examples include gallons per minute, also called GPM for liquids, and cubic feet of air per hour for gases, abbreviated CFM. This illustration demonstrates how force is multiplied in a fluid power system. At the input piston on the left, we apply 1,000 pounds of force, which is then transmitted to the piston whose area measures 10 square inches. This generates a pressure of 100 psi, which in turn applies its force to the 20 inch square piston, producing an output force of 2,000 pounds of force. It's important to remember that the pressure is multiplied times the area to calculate the force. Efficiency is a measure of how much work or energy is conserved in a process. In many processes, work or energy is lost as waste, heat, or vibration. A machine's efficiency is the energy output divided by the energy input and expressed as a percentage. A perfect process would have an efficiency of 100%.